Reading is a special time to lose yourself in another world. You get to talk to unicorns, fight vampires, or fall in love with vampires, then fight them again. On other days, you might be rooting for Elizabeth to get Darcy. He's certainly handsome enough to tempt me. But with so many books to read and so little time, how do you make time for your hobby? Hello, I'm Riley, and this is Otherworldly Fiction. Today, I'll be offering eight tips on how to make time for reading. My English teacher said that even 15 minutes a day is better than nothing, and I never forgot that. If you enjoy this video, or even if you just sort of like it but you're not sure, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment below. To begin, The Commute is one of your best bets for cracking open that novel. You're stuck standing because a woman decided her bag needed the seat more than you. You could stew in passive-aggressive silence, too shy to say anything, but hoping she spills scalding coffee on herself later. Or you could attempt to read a book. I'm not saying it will be easy, especially if your balance is bad, but reading during your daily commute can turn a chore into something to look forward to. My next tip can be dangerous. Read before bed. Your day job is behind you, as is that rerun of Friends. The time is yours, but why is it dangerous? If getting enough sleep is a problem for you, ignore this tip, unless you're an ardent bookworm. It's a badge of honor to read until three in the morning in order to finish a book. Don't say I didn't warn you. Maybe neither the commute or bedtime work because you have a phone addiction, though I probably don't need to tell you that blue light before shut-eye is bad for you. Still, if those times don't work, the third option is breaks. Your job, if it's not totally illegal, is required to give you breaks. These usually run from 15 minutes to half an hour. After you've eaten those disgusting microwaved potatoes and gone to the washroom, crack open that book. Even if you only read five pages a day, you'll still be able to read the first Game of Thrones book under a year. Keep reading at that rate, and you might get the sixth book by the time you're ready for it. Though that's a maybe. My next suggested time is in the morning. Work reading into your schedule. Read your book while you slop Cheerios into your stomach. Set your alarm to go off 15 minutes later so you can relax for those 15 minutes before breaking into the usual blind panic. Just be warned that if you try to read while you eat, you'll probably forget to actually eat. The fifth best time to read is on the weekend, if you have one of those, and it's really the best time. You don't have to devote your Saturday to reading, but with the day at your disposal, assuming you didn't get chewed out by your boss via text for that screw-up yesterday, you can pick and choose which hours you want to set aside, hopefully distraction-free. And if weekends aren't enough because of your need for a social life, combine the two. Start a book club. Whether you're arguing for Team Jacob or debating what Moby Dick is a metaphor for, Book clubs are a great way to both read and connect with people. It's a win-win. Plus, being in a club forces you to be accountable to actually read. Moreover, you'll be exposed to books you wouldn't have chosen otherwise, since everyone in a fair book club will be choosing something each month. The next way to find time to read is after work. There's a magical 15 minutes between coming in the door and starting dinner. You sink into an armchair that really needs to be replaced and kick the shoes off your throbbing feet. You'll move again when you can feel your legs. Even with your stomach snarling, you don't think about dinner. You maul over all the ways you're going to hurt that driver if you see him again. He gave you the bird and you took down his license plate. You're going to find him and you're going to end him. Okay, so instead of plotting murder, you need to read a book. This requires some planning ahead. Place your novel on the little table that sits beside your chair. When you collapse later on, your book will be within easy reach and your homicidal scheme will be forgotten in the wake of pretty prose and romantic tension. My eighth piece of advice is to pick a day. 
Maybe you do have the time, but you're too distracted by all the 10 series to watch on your to watch list, and there's five video games you haven't played yet. If this is you, pick a special day. Let's say Thursday. Thursday is your sacred day. On every other day of the week, you'll have time for that friend's rerun. Again. But Thursday, you read. Just Thursdays, no pressure. And if your passion for reading is renewed, you might end up choosing a second sacred day, but that's up to you. Finally, my ninth piece of advice. Okay, I said there would be eight pieces of advice, but this is fairly simple. Stop watching this video. That's right, you heard me. If you have time to sit and listen to me ramble, you have time to read your book. So there's your ninth piece of advice. Shut this off. There are so many books to read and so little time, but by unplugging your television, setting your phone down, and taking advantage of 15-minute stretches, you can have time to read. What about you? What do you do to make time for reading? Have you been struggling to make time? Or did 2020 give you more time than ever to polish off 50 books? And if you enjoyed this and want to see more, please hit the subscribe and like buttons. Bye! Seriously, turn this off and read your book. No, no, don't click on those end screens. Well, whatever. I can't make your choices for you.